we'll do some questions. Just um, a great crowd, great student crowd. I um, really appreciate our community coming out on a Tuesday night. Um, I know that we are very excited. We returned some more points than anyone in the SEC, the first time to win 20 games in 19 years. And, you know, our goal is to take this thing back to the NCAA tournament for the first time in a long, long time. And uh, we had a great practice this morning for about three and a half hours. So uh, we kind of declined the scrimmage because we knew we had a great show coming with our guys. And how much fun it is to see this incredible freshman class blended in with a great group of returnees. So, Coach, I enjoyed watching tonight, and I'll let him take it from here. But thanks for, for coming out to support us tonight, and we look forward to seeing you in this room to support women's basketball at the University of Alabama. So, thank you for your support, and roll tide. Wow, what a night. Um, you know, to have both our men's and women's team uh, represented tonight, and I think both teams uh, put on a great show. Our girls, they... They just have great attitudes, and Coach Christie's done such a marvelous job with them in terms of the way they carry themselves on and off the court. And it's just a wonderful partnership. It's it's so easy for me to uh, support our women's team. Uh, Coach Christie, uh, even when I don't have an invitation uh, or a reservation, she allows me to come to her practices and and just support our young ladies and uh, and all of their endeavors and. Um, I just can't wait to see our women's basketball team perform this year in non-conference and in conference. But tonight was a celebration of community, a community that supports both teams, a community that, that are, that's behind us 1,000% through all of the great wins and the tough losses. They understand our vision, and uh, our visions are very, very similar. And uh, we're striving and trying to achieve the same goals to really represent the University of Alabama, and especially in postseason in the NCAA tournament. But we both understand that we have a lot of work to do. You know, they had a three and a half hour practice um, <laughs> this morning. We probably going to break a record on Thursday based on some of the defense that I saw in this exhibition tonight. But the guys had a lot of fun. They, they tried to put on the show for our fans, and, and I think they did that. Coaches, uh, we'll start with Chandler here on the left side. Avery, just some injury updates. Uh, how's Riley progressing after the hip? And then Armand sat out tonight. Do you have an update on him? Yeah, Riley's progressing uh, nicely. Um, he's getting better and better. You know, he's you know basically uh, is week to week with him, uh, but uh, he's progressing, uh, getting stronger. The hip is uh, healing properly, but uh, we just don't have a timetable for him right now. Armand has a bruised knee. And um, he's, he's week to week, and uh, we hope to have him back here sometime soon. Go to Matt on the right side here. Avery, first of all, I don't know why you didn't take part in the dunk contest. Why, did, why you didn't show off and do something in the dunk contest? Um, I didn't have a trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. on to serious note, um, with, with Colin and, and John Petty, just how, how have you seen them come along and just looking at their their individual games, what, what would you say their strengths are and what they they, they bring to? Well, they're both you know, very competitive young men. Uh, they can pass, dribble, and shoot. They compete on the defensive end. They want to get better. Uh, and a lot of the guys that we, we, we have to play and compete against this year, a lot of those high-level freshmen, especially the ones that are in our conference or with some of the other ranked teams that we're going to, be going to play against, they've been playing against some of those guys for the last year or two on, on the AAU circuit. So they're very familiar, and I think they're very confident in their abilities to do what they need to do on the floor. We just have to support them by getting more out of our returning players. And, um, you know, our returning players are going to have to step it up uh, especially in this coming days of practice and and um, especially as we head into exhibition in our first game against Memphis. Back right, season. Coach, um, tonight the way you had the teams divided, we saw Colin and, and Dejan on separate teams. How much have you worked them together? How has that worked for you? Yeah, we tried to work them together. And, you know, Coach Christie knows, the, you know, trying to find the best combinations on the floor is, is critical. So whether it's Jordan or Hannah or Colin or Dejon, trying to figure out who works well together and in what situations and what types of offense and flow that they need to function out there on the court together and matchups defensively. So, you know, for both of us, it's about when you have 
groups of five out there, it starts with groups of two sometimes. What two guys play well together? What three guys play together in four and five? And then individually, can they win or dominate their matchup? So it, whether it's women's or men's basketball, it's all the same, trying to figure out who works well together. On the right side here, Alex, you've talked quite a bit about uh, you know, some of the defensive lapses, even in Canada, that was an issue. Is this a, a season where with some of the new offensive threats you have that you might have to take some, you know, just maybe give away some, some defense, just take some offense? You know, when I watched um, – Coach's team play against Mississippi State last year, and they're pretty good, right, Coach? They're pretty good, right? <laughs> so I was thinking, you know, the way we were attacking um, offensively, they got a pretty big team on the front lines, kind of like some of the front lines that we play against. You know, how do you want to attack them, and then what can you get away with defensively? Um, you know, do you want to press? Do you want to fall back in the zone? Uh, for us, we think we're going to have a lot of versatility. Uh, we're not just going to be a man-to-man -man team. You know, we think for us to be effective, we we got to have some other defenses. Uh, we got time for a couple more questions. Starting on the left here, Reiner. Last year, you talked about guys that you know maybe didn't step up into that kind of alpha dog role. I mean, it seems this year that's completely different. It seems like you got guys that are really willing to take charge. How are you guys going to kind of be able to balance that dynamic between maybe? not having too many guys that, you know, maybe want that ball at that time. Well, again, guys, we, we're in the same situation. Our returning players have to step up. We can talk about all these freshmen until we blew in the face, but Braxton Key and Dejon Ingram on our team, they, you know, and Dante Hall and A.J. Jr. and Riley Norris, you know, those guys have played in real in uh, uh, SEC uh, conference games and, you know, non-conference games, and they've played in some big games. Uh, and, and we've lost some heartbreakers. So I think the key and the strength of our team, we, our freshmen, they haven't experienced anything yet. And I have to do a good job of putting them in the right situations. But it's good for both of us. It's going to be our returning players. So two more questions. Any, we, we, any more questions for Coach? Go ahead. You go first. Here we go, Chris. Is this the most confident you've had a, a team going into a season here? Well, I think absolutely. As Coach just mentioned, you know, experience is invaluable. And um, this is an experienced league on both the men's and women's side, and experience will carry you. Um, your youth and your newcomers will kind of, you know, uh, help uh, and definitely, but until you have the experience, and any time you have that experience, it's confidence. You know, our senior class was our first recruiting class, and what they've experienced, both good and bad, and happy and sad, they've been able to draw from. And um, they will be the difference for us as well. Our newcomers are talented, but they don't have one minute in this league. And this league is rugged. And uh, it's going to be about experience. Your last question, Nick, in the way back here. Uh, Coach, everybody's been talking about the guys on the outside, but you've got the best post depth that you've had so far here at Alabama. How have you seen those guys grow? And also, talking again with two guys playing together, are there any two guys, or do you see them gelling, playing well together, a pair, or all three of them? How do you see that working out? Yeah, you know, with all of our post guys, Dante Hall, we thought he took a significant step in the SEC tournament, you know, shooting his jump hook. Um, and now you have a guy like Daniel Giddings. You can see, I mean, he's 6'10", 250 pounds solid, and he's a force inside. Uh, we also have some depth there with Galen Smith, our freshman, um, who's put on about 20 pounds since he... Uh, joined us here at, on campus and then Alex Reese gives us a different dynamic because we can play him at some five and he'll be more of a three-point shooting five. We haven't had that capability here so you know those guys are all vying for minutes. We can't play them all right now. We're going to have a little bit more of a set rotation early in the season. Last year you saw me uh, we were kind of messing around with 11-man rotation. It just doesn't work. We, we want to get to that eight, eight-and-a-half, nine-man rotation early in the season, and the rest of the guys will use them in special situations. Okay? Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Roll time. Roll time.